Welcome to episode 93 for Gaming Dad 101, the show where gamers became dads and are now looking for cheat codes. If you're brand new to the show, Gaming Dad 101 goes live each and every single Wednesday as a podcast, and then we go live as a video on YouTube on Fridays. Joining me as usual is my co-host, Ricky. Yo, what's going on, my folks? What's going on, Ricky? We have another week. This is the week after Borderlands came out. That's how I'm describing it because that's what I've done this weekend. <laughs> um, have you been able to pick it up? No, I have not. I haven't even pre-ordered it or anything. That oh, never Jesus. even did. That was your first mistake. So I did reach out to the person <laughs> who owed us a gamer on the street review, Mr. Garrett Schneider. Um, but unfortunately, he wasn't been able to play. And I quote, and this is what I received from oh, him. What? He says. I have not. I'm still playing, and I haven't had much time. Uh, I have lots of thoughts, but it isn't fully developed. If you enjoyed Borderlands 2, this is very similar so far. He heard that the ending was sad, but he didn't want any spoilers, though. Thank you, Garrett, for not providing spoilers either. Uh, so he says, and this is I quote, I'll do it for next week for sure. Okay. So we can we can wait on that for next week for Garrett um, to see what he said. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give you my impressions. Now, my, and I've said it before, Borderlands always seemed like an awesome game to check out. It always seemed to be kind of up my alley, but I never really checked it out. Now, we, um, when the Handsome Collection came out as a free, a free PlayStation Plus game, my wife and I picked it up since it was free. We didn't have to buy two copies because I only had the one copy and I didn't want to buy it digitally again or whatever. So it came out for free, so we started play, uh, playing the pre-sequel. Mm-hmm. That was enough to get my wife hooked, and she was like, "Yeah, we have to get Borderlands 3. So it became one of those things where, if I if you remember last week, I mentioned my AC broke, so yep. it was one of those like, "Do I have enough money to do this? Should I do this? Do we, let's just wait for the next paycheck type of thing." And um, I can't. I wish I could credit who said it, but somebody said something about Borderlands, and my wife was like. Yeah, I can't wait to get it. And I was like, yeah, I'm getting it tonight. Screw it. I don't care. (laughs) So we bought it and we played it. We played Friday. We played Saturday and we played Sunday. I think I've played overall about seven hours or so. That's not bad. I just hit level 10. Okay, that's not bad. I just hit level 10. I don't think we're that far into the story, to be honest with you. We're kind of just exploring and (laughs) we're just like, there's so much crap. So like I posted a meme in the group. I don't know if you saw it, Ricky. It's the one about the loot. Oh, yes. Who's playing? Yeah, so it was like Diablo 3, and it's like surrounded with loot. Like Borderlands, and you're surrounded with loot. And then Destiny, yeah, like the single <laughs> thing. And um, that's kind of what it feels like. There's so much to collect. It's not okay. even, I'll be honest with you, some of the things I'm here collecting, and I'm like picking up, and I'm opening chests, and I'm like, why am I even doing this? I don't care. I don't need ammo. I don't need money. I don't need, what am I doing? But I still do it. It's fun as hell. Um <laughs> So what I can tell you from somebody who has very little experience, um, we played the pre-sequel. Uh, we've sunk about 15 hours into the pre-sequel, but we never finished it because we just didn't have time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, so far, highly enjoying it. Highly recommend it if you haven't uh, picked it up yet, Ricky. Um really really a lot of fun so if you're on the fence uh and i know there's been a lot of controversy and there was that whole boycott thing give it a oh, shot i'm not i'm not on the fence uh, my whole rhyme reason is i just haven't finished the you know the prequel the first two and i'm the type of person that i, I really don't like jumping into uh into the middle of a game without me knowing like a little bit of backstory or whatever Neither do I, but wikis, man. <laughs> so, uh, like, like for example, I have, um, oh, uh, Bioshock. I played the first mm. one. I started playing the second one. I own the third one, but I never finished the third, or I've never even played the third one because I haven't finished the second one. So. Here's the funny thing. <clears throat> Bioshock, I've only played the third. <laughs> I've only played Infinite. I loved Infinite, go. and I hear that Infinite is not as good as the rest. I still haven't gone back. It's just oh, really? one of those cases. Oh, yeah, no, I hear that supposedly they're better. <clears throat> I got to check it out. That's one of those games that, like, I admit it, but I'm kind of ashamed to admit mm-hmm. it that I haven't played it. But, you know, there's just so many games, man. Uh, but, yeah, man, so how you been? How's your week been? Man. I, I've been sinking into Borderlands, and, and Link to the Past has been the games that I've been, like, chewing for the past, like, week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, me, I I actually went ahead and did the temporary subscription, the free subscription, to mm-hmm. September 30th for uh, you play soft or whatever you play plus. <laughs> yeah, you Pretty play soft. Tough. I really yeah. do play soft because you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I've, yeah. I've only I've only 
played what is it just like the intro mission on okay. uh do- or what is it uh watch dogs 2 just because i've always wanted to play it oh that's right i forgot yeah. you've never played it and you've no. been on. okay so first of all how's the service how's, how's are you play- on pc on what PC. winning terms I'm, PC. I'm, I'm doing it on pc um it it took me a second just to figure out how to actually download the free games um, because as soon as I subscribed, um, I went ahead and downloaded, uh, what was it, uh, uh, The Crew 2. I never played the first one, but I, just because I know that the cars morph back and forth or whatever, mm-hmm. I play, I downloaded that one, I played that one. It was it was pretty decent. Then I, went I can't to, imagine the story to The Crew would be that instrumental that if you no. skip one, you'll do something. Yeah, no. Um, and then when I went, well, I immediately downloaded The Crew 2. Then when I went to try to download immediately um, Watch Dogs 2, it was giving me an error. Like, it wasn't allowing me to download at first. Like, I didn't even have an option to be able to download it without purchasing it. So, I don't know if just the the system that as soon as you subscribe, I don't know if there's like a time period for the system to kind of recognize that you actually did a subscription. Uh, it had to sync. Yeah, once it sync, then that's when I finally got the option to like, download all the different games that i wanted to um but to be honest it actually took about five to ten minutes for the system to actually link that I actually did subscribe so Weird. that yeah that could be a little frustrating for people that just <laughs> doesn't, doesn't understand and yeah and it wasn't user friendly at all at first before before everything linked together it wasn't user friendly so and there was no way for me to tell um what exactly was going on um, but yeah, no, I started playing the Watch Dogs 2. I, I went ahead and did the prologue, the entry mission and everything. The gameplay smooth. Um, you start off with a gun, but I decided to play the stealth mode and not actually kill anybody. So I just wanted to, to stun them and just knock Good them out. Good job. It's the hardest mode to play in. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. The people who run in and can't do stealth are just, you're, you're, you're just, no. Stealth is the way to, if you want to play a game the hard way, stealth. Yep. Yep, so I played on that. Your character basically starts like a yo-yo looking um, item, which is basically a string and like a ball that you basically get to hit people with and knock them out and choke them to like do a sleeper kind of choke. And what game is this? The Crew? No, uh, uh, Watch Dogs 2. I've played Watch Dogs 2. I never had a yo-yo. What the hell? It's like a yo-yo. Yeah, it's like a yo-yo kind of item, but it's more like a ball with a string. I never had that. Really? I mean, it came, what the hell? it came default with the character, so I don't know. <laughs> that was one. That was automatically one think- of the options that I got. I know. Go I know play. that. I'm, I know Watch Dogs once did not have that, so I'm not sure if you're confusing one and two together. But no, I've played two, them both. With two, you do start with the yo-yo looking item and a gun. Yo-yo and, looking item. I mean, I don't know what exactly it is. It's a ball. It's a string and a ball. Yo, yo. It makes sense. It's, it makes sense. You're fine. Yeah. And, yeah, you basically wind it up and down. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. Wind it up and down. Like a yo, yo. But, uh, but, yeah, no. Um, so, I just love the aspect that I don't fully have to use the gun to get anywhere. Um, the features, I was trying to play around when I was, uh, after I finished and everything, I was driving around the world. And I was just like, you know what, let me... Because I know in the first one, I can hack into, like, CCTVs. I can hack mm-hmm. into uh, the traffic lights, uh, sewer pipes. And whenever it came to the sewer pipes, it was more of the sewer pipe lid, you know, just blowing off. And yeah. then just having, like, a little, you know, steam or whatever come up. No, when I did it with this, I was so close to the sewer pipe that the whole entire with floor it, just blew up. I'm like, holy crap! I was not expecting this. You know, my favorite thing to do is in Watch Dogs <laughs> is to, and then I, um, one and two, mm-hmm. is to go by those uh, barriers that you can activate and they come up. And they're like the little bars that are on, that sink into the floor and then they nice. come up or whatever. So you drive over them, you activate them, and it comes up and it bars anybody from coming behind you. So nice. if you're in the middle of a police chase, it works really nicely because it stops the cops right there in their tracks. I have not gotten that far, so I haven't seen that, but that sounds pretty freaking cool. It's freaking um, awesome. One of the things that I did notice, though, too, that fairly quickly, if even if you steal something in public, people will call the cops on you. 
<laughs> I did not know that because the first one I don't remember that happening. But I remember I I I, 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 did. I I got out of a house. I was like in like some pink boxers, like flamingo looking boxers. Okay. And I just crossed the street to like a pool party. There was a car in the driveway. I break into the car. It's like, hey, that's my car. <laughs> Next thing I know, it's like I can see like the little flashes on my little radar things talking about, oh, you have, you know, you've, you've caught the police attention. Fair and enough. then you see like the police driving around the areas where you're at. So I'm like trying to hide. I'm like, do they really know it's me? I am not sure. I don't want to risk it. But yeah, now. Nice. But and uh, one of the good things that I will say that I haven't mentioned yet is that with the Uplay Plus uh, service, I was able to download the deluxe version of the game. So it gave me the season pass with all of the season pass content mm. that was on it. So see, that's the part that interests me about yes. the, se- the you know the service. Mm-hmm. That's the part that's like. To be able to get everything. But then it also, you know what it does? It makes me feel more. Um, so you know how like the mentality has been with DLC that we're getting an incomplete game. Yep. And that it's just like, extra, you know, they're selling you the parts of the game that they took out. This kind of makes me feel that that's reinforced a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I know that that may not be the case, but for some reason it just kind of rubs me that way. So that's the kind of issue that I have with it. But I'm kind of curious. How much is it? That um, uh, it's fifteen ninety nine uh, okay. plus tax. So one thing that I will say now that I know that I can actually download like the, the deluxe version, I believe you can pr- also do a deluxe version in um, Games Pass, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Hmm. Um, so right now, if I am not able to do it on Games Pass, I actually would say that I would prefer the method that Ubisoft is actually taking. That okay. it allows you to get those um, additional contents and all that. Uh, because, for example, one of the games that I was playing in Games Pass was uh, Forza. And you have to buy the DLCs for those games. So it's not yep. being provided to you. So a service that is 15 bucks a month, and if they do decide mm-hmm. to give you the deluxe version where you already have access to the, to most of the contents to the through the um, uh, DLC or whatever season pass, mm-hmm. and if I just have to buy whatever additional costumes that I just want just for the heck of it, I am perfectly fine with that. So Fair enough. this subscription model actually attracted me more. Now that I then your traditional games yeah, pass, okay. It's just unfortunately it doesn't have a lot of the games that I enjoy or that I like. So that's currently the only downfall that I have with uh. But is it games you don't like or games you haven't experienced yet? Ah, uh, I'm not. I, I like I said before, I have really never gotten into RPGs um too much. So they have like um. The AC games. I'm not a big, big fan of the AC games. All right. So literally, the last two AC games are the only ones that are RPG ish. Everything before that, easy, easy peasy. I think that would be easier for. So, coming from like from your perspective, I mm-hmm. think that all of the Assassin's Creed games up until the last two, you should be fine, and you might actually get into them. Okay. As far as Assassin's Creed goes, the best ones are the Ezio Trilogy and Black Flag. Those are like my favorite games. Okay, I have played. So um, I would recommend. I would highly recommend you play the Ezio Trilogy, uh, which is uh, Assassin's Creed Two Brotherhood, and I can't remember the last one. And then obviously Black Flag, which is. Uh, Assassin's Creed 4. I've, pl- I've played Rogue, and that was pretty fun because it did give me an option of being on a boat and land. Well, if you like Rogue, Black Flag is better. Okay. So, like, Rogue is Rogue is kind of Black Flag version light. So, okay. it, it, it what they did is they took a lot of the stuff from Black Flag and the, the, the assets and, and some of that uh, engine and everything and, but, you know, created a brand new game, mm-hmm. and they kind of spit it out. Uh, so they built that game off of Black Flag. So if you enjoyed that one, Black Flag is definitely for you. And, I mean, I love pirates, so that's the reason why I love it. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Like, all, all they needed to say was pirates. I was like, I'm in. Sweet. Because <laughs> ships and the junk. Man, you sing pirate songs, all right? 
You oh, really? See, oh, yes, they have jaunties. And if you have not, man, I seriously, seriously think you need to. <laughs> but again, if you if you need if you are trying to check out uh, a trilogy, then definitely you need to check out. If you're trying to check out Assassin's Creed, you need to check out that trilogy. Okay. So it's a uh, let me see. And of course, now I can't find what the freaking third one is. So yeah, I gotta find. It's gonna it's gonna bug me for throughout the whole episode. Watch, I'm gonna look for it throughout the episode. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> but all right, let's go ahead and just get into the show. Let's get into the very first segment for this week. It's actually different than the rest of the week. We have some housekeeping, everybody. Woo-hoo! So I wanted to bring it up because we have one month left, but in a month, it's our official two-year anniversary, everybody. Oh, wow, that's right. We've been doing this show for two years, and I didn't even realize you hadn't caught on to that, which is wonderful. It makes this more special. (laughs) So we have a plan. And by we, I mean me, because well, he clearly just realized that it's Remember, I, st- I also didn't start 100% since the very beginning. I started exactly. more into started the halfway season, or uh, episode 30-ish. Exactly. 20, 20, high 20s, low 30s, so. Something along those lines. So, so it is kind of a surprise for you. But yeah, man, the show's been running for, oh, for two years in oh, about wow. a month. So I have a plan of what I'd like to do, but I did want to put it out there for any of the listeners and any of the Facebook group people and anybody out there who wants to see something, any, anything, uh, anything you'd like to see us do, anything you would like to hear us uh, do, anything special. Um, but I have an idea. I think I'll run with, I'll run it by you, Ricky, okay. later so you can think about it. But I would like to hear from anybody. So if you have any thoughts, any comments on it, let us know. Because, again, it's a two-year anniversary. This is like one hell of a milestone in real we would not be able to have hit this milestone without you guys. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely, so guys. Thank you so much for that. Uh, but, of course, we'll thank you more on that episode. Stick tuned. So that's a month from now. That The episode, the first episode of Gaming Dad went live October 16th of 2017. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> so it's the week of the 16th. Ironically enough, the week after my birthday. So start thinking on that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a lot of special things that day for me then. October man, o- well, October, October 16th is a lot it's it's a lot of special things for me. That's when right. uh, actually October the 16th it's also the day that I'm doing the walkthrough for my new place. Nice. So that'll that'll be cool. Um I should Your be anniversary and a house. Yeah. Wait, and... celebrating with the house what the hell do I get? <laughs> I can't celebrate with the house, Ricky. I can't afford another one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is just the walking. That's not the closing. But um, right. closing will be shortly after. So I would actually be potentially be in our new place too for that. Right. So Sweet. There we go. All right. Well, let's go ahead and actually get started with the show with the actual first segment of the show, which is Ricky's segment. Ricky, tell us why. Aside from the house, why are we? Bro- <laughs> well, yeah. Right. Um, no, on September the 17th, we actually have um, AI, the Summoning Files, coming out for the PS4, uh, PC, and the Switch. We also have LEGO uh, Jurassic World coming out for the Switch. Um, then for the September 20th date, we have <laughs> your favorite. Uh, yes, Legend- I can't wait. <laughs> the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening coming I'll out for the Switch. You. This week has been hell. I can't wait for this game to come. <laughs> like Dude. that. I'm, I'm banging my entire week on this Friday. game. Friday. Friday, baby. Friday. Not just because this game. Do you have this on here? Okay, I'll add this to the end. Go ahead. Okay. Um, then we have uh, Untitled Goose Game coming out for the Switch and PC. We is ha- it Untitled Goose Game or is the legit name of the game Untitled Goose? I do not know. I will have to look more into that. Dude, but that, is actually, that is actually the information that popped up when I was... Uh, Gathering on my sources. Um, oh, no, no, you're fine. Now but I'm yeah, curious. That's then, an interesting get name. Yeah, then we have uh, Nina Kuni 2, uh, or not Nina Kuni 2, Jesus Christ. Uh, Nina Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, coming out for the Switch. And then we have the remaster version uh, coming out for the PS4 and PC. <clears throat> so, what I was going to add to the end of it is I've been waiting. This entire week for Link's Awakening to come out. I've been playing Link to the Past. I've mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Um, And that has been like the best um, appetizer to try to play this game. Now, the challenge will be in trying to finish a Link to the Past. Here's the thing. I think I'm at the end. So I think I'm almost done with it. Okay. I just, I'm trying. So I'm fighting the wizard. I don't know if it's like the first fight or the last fight or whatever. I've already collected the three pendants. I have the master sword. I've done a whole mess of things. I've walked the entire map, I feel. So at this point, 
I'm hoping this is the end, and I'm hoping I can finish it before Friday because I really want to start on this one. But the reason, another reason why I'm excited is so you remember, um, oh my god, it is called Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> So you remember I've mentioned how my wife has been wanting a Switch of her own. Yep. So we decided to go ahead and purchase another Switch. So now we have another Switch coming. Now what we did, though, is we talked to our youngest. So my wife wants one that can connect to the TV, of course, because she's at home. She can connect to the TV. You know, if we go upstairs, we can have a dock up there. She can connect to that. Makes sense. But our youngest – or well, not our youngest, our oldest kid, AJ – he has his own Switch. We've talked about when we got it for him for Christmas. We got him the Pokemon version. He doesn't... He only plays handheld. He never disconnects his Joy-Con. He never plugs it to the TV. Really? So, yeah. So, we showed him the new DS... Uh, the new Switch Lite. So, he actually liked the Switch Lite. And it's basically works just as well for him for what he needs. So, what we did is we bought him the yellow Switch Lite... Uh, and that's also going to be coming here on Friday. Oh. So I, I may, if I remember, and if I'm able to stop him from ripping into the box, I might be able to do an unboxing. I may have him do the unboxing because I think that'd be really cool because he's okay. been wanting to do stuff like that. So we may do an unboxing together for the new Switch Lite this weekend for, for next week's episode. But we have that coming. So that's interesting. That's also coming on the 20th. The biggest reason why I'm excited about that, DC Universe Online just came to the Switch. <laughs> so guess what game the three of us are playing? Um, DC the Universe. Playing DC Universe Online. So. And a thousand percent, this game is called Untitled Goose Game. Hi! Say hi to everybody! <clears throat> we have a guest. How are you? She came to say goodnight to me. Aww. But yeah, that's that's part of being a, you know, a dad. We get <laughs> moments like this. So at least I get to show that this little one actually does love me, even though I'm <laughs> going to be blaming her later on today. <laughs> it's off of the camera. She knows the camera's on, and she's like, oh, man, I got to love on daddy so people believe it. That's I got to right. make it believable. <clears throat> All right. So let's go ahead and let's get into the news. So the first news article that I wanted to get to, ironically enough, is about Ubisoft. Uh, CEO Yves Guimont told Game Industry Biz, quote, if you want to have a story of 15 hours, you can have it, but you can also have other stories. You live in a world, you live in our world and you pursue what you want to pursue. You have an experience, many unity like experiences. And he's talking about why they are basically sticking to open world games. If you've noticed, uh, Ubisoft, most of Ubisoft games are open world games. And there hasn't been, they haven't really come out with any like linear game uh, that has been a major title of major importance in a very long time. Every game they've come out, Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, uh, I'm, I'm, Names Escape Me, any yeah. Tom Clancy a uh, game that has come out, they're all open world games. And, and that's the mentality that he has. So the reason why I wanted to bring this up to you is, do you agree? Are, are, are you, because there's been so many open world games. And when it comes to people like you and I, when our schedules are so conflicted, open world games, as fun as they can be, can be detrimental because we may never be able to check the whole thing out. Yep. So how do you feel about this? Because to me, it reads to an extent that, this is what they want to do, and, and they're sticking to it. But at the same time, it kind of seems – I feel a little left out, to be honest with you. <laughs> As a gaming dad, I'm like, man, I, I love your stories for the most part. I, I just – there's a lot. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. the, pro the biggest problem I have, too, is that a lot of times with open worlds, a lot of things become collect-a-thons. And it just becomes collect X random number that we just came up arbitrarily – of this one item and then collect that many other number of this other item. So those are the kinds of things that I, you know, I, I don't really enjoy, but I kind of wanted to see how do you, how do you feel about this whole thing? Um, open world games to me, they're not bad. Um, but I do tend to get very heavily distracted in those type of games. Um, just because in the game or like outside of the game going back in. Well, in, well, okay. So, when I mean I get distracted within the actual game is because I can f start following a mission because, to mm -hmm. me, I'm more of a missions-driven person. I, I like actually playing the campaign mode and all that stuff more than actually playing the online version of, um, of games just because sometimes I just like doing my own thing and I just want to go on my own pace 
and sometimes the online version doesn't give me that satisfaction. So when I'm doing an open world game, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I know that there's this type of elements. Let me look for this type of element and I kind of just leave behind the, the story mission and then I completely get lost. It's like, well, I can't find what I'm looking for or I'm not high enough to uh, or level high uh, to get uh, to the... <laughs> okay, I realize I need a clarification, but okay. Uh, well, I, I had a funny look. You know, I have, I have live Fair audience enough. over here, the, sorry. The wife gave you a look. Yeah. Oh, no I was like, all right, stop judging. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so then I start getting frustrated, and then I try to go back to the to the main story, and then I just keep thinking about what I can't accomplish because I'm I'm not at the right place yet. And then I'm just like, you know what, screw it all, screw the world, I'm, I'm done. Fair enough. See, what, what happens with me is kind of like what's happening with Borderlands where I sink like 10 hours into something and I'm just like I'm like a quarter done and I'm just like oh what's over there oh what's over there oh well that's a really interesting thing all the way in the back end over there can I get to it <laughs> so to the point where I've actually like timed how long it took me from go to one end of Skyrim to the other end of Skyrim Jesus. In, in multiple directions just because at one point I was yeah, I had time in my hands at one point <laughs> before I was married and had children. I, uh, yeah, now I, you're, I did. Now you regret not playing as many games as you could. <laughs> no, no, I've always, I've played a fair amount of games. Okay. I've played a fair amount. I just wish I had, I wish I had more time. I wish, <laughs> I wish, I wish I needed less sleep. I think that would work out better because yeah. if I needed less sleep, I think there may just be enough time in the day. Just, maybe. just maybe. Just me. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and move on to the next story. The rest of the show is actually extremely Nintendo heavy. Um, Damn, Nintendo so taking heavy, over the world. In fact, they're whipping it out and suing somebody else. Um, oh, I that saw that. Side, Nintendo is suing somebody else. So, Polygon reports that apparently ROM Universe is also being hosted. Mm-hmm. Being hosted, sorry, being sued. Uh, we talked about this, uh, was it last week or the week before, where Nintendo's suing people for copyright infringement because they're posting illegal copies of their games. So yeah. um, I'm going to go ahead and read an excerpt from this article over on Kotaku. Uh, Polygon reports, not only is ROM Universe hosting pirated copies of current releases, and here's the part that I'm like, holy shit, but the site is charging $30 memberships to grant faster access to the files. Nintendo's asking for 150000 for each copyright infringement Ooh. and up to two million for each trademark infringement. Rom Universe ad- and here's a, here's the kicker. Ron Universe is advertising that it has sixty thousand ROMs available for download. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try to go to the site? Uh, no, I tried to uh, do the math on my phone. My phone even aired out. <laughs> <laughs> but if you uh, if I flip it that way, that is nine million dollars just on the one hundred and fifty times sixty. A hundred times sixty. Where'd you get the sixty? It's sixty thousand. Uh, yes, the one hundred and fifty thousand dollars times one hundred or er, times sixty thousand oh, yeah, okay. games oh, is buddy, buddy. nine million dollars. That's this not counting the other portion. No, no, no. This is exactly. That's not even counting the other portion. Right now, you're talking about games. Yep. Right? So, like, let's pretend that you have, like, two Legend of Zelda, so that's $300,000 for both. But then it's $2 million for each trademark infringement. So, that's $2 million just for Zelda. So, it's $2,300,000 mm-hmm. just at Zelda if they only had two alone. Yep. So, do the math. I mean, realistically, big trademarks. Donkey Kong, Mario, Zelda, uh, I'd freaking, uh, I mean, those are the really big ones. Yoshi, Pikmin, uh, I mean, Smash Brothers. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, all these games that are, like, their primary source, like, right there, that's six alone that named me off the top of our heads, just thinking and trying to, like, do this math. It's insanity. Like, they're not playing easy. <laughs> they're yeah. not being nice. They're going for the jugular, which... Doesn't surprise me, but I mean, it's one of those cases where, like, I, I like, I kind of like seeing the dedication Nintendo has, but we go back to the fact that I do like the homebrew stuff, so I'm kind of like disappointed. <laughs> on that. But, um, yeah, man, they're not, they are not playing, man. No, they never have, so I don't know why people like pushing the envelopes. I, 
I really think that they believe that they can go under the radar, but not with Nintendo. Not many people can. Not at least not well, for long. Here's the thing, though. Like my thing is, I think the biggest red flag and the biggest thing they should have thought of is you're selling a membership for thirty dollars yeah. to download illegal games. Yeah. Seriously, like how did you not think that somehow would come up somewhere somehow? Like, damn, man, that's just like. I mean, they try to play slick. Like, hey, we're a membership place you know we don't do this what are you talking about look that way squirrel <laughs> that was nice <clears throat> i almost choked on my drink. so yeah that's that's a big chunk of change i just hope that they they take all this money and make more games just make more games i know stuff. i really I hope that's all i want but then like they grab and like you see nintendo is like multifaceted so like on one hand they're suing the crap out of everybody. On the other hand, they come out with weird peripherals and call it a fitness adventure. <laughs> they announced. I love the segue. Dude, I know. It was awesome. <laughs> um, so they announced a new game that is essentially part of their fitness program. Uh, it's called Ring Fit Adventure, which is an RPG mm-hmm. adventure game where you use a strap. Or, there's a strap <laughs> around your leg. Yeah. I almost, yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I'm the one who wrote this expert. Uh, this excerpt. Um, you, there's a strap that you put around your leg where you uh, station one Joy-Con and then there's a ring and it's like this ring device. It looks like a giant steering wheel. It's flexible and stuff mm-hmm. where you put the other Joy-Con and that's kind of how you play. And there's, there's different things. You jog in place, you do this, you squeeze, you you know, whatever. Um, and it's apparently this like really fleshed out RPG adventure. And so far it's got pretty good reviews, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, no, but it's like really interesting actually. I'm actually, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of curious about it. Uh, yeah, cool. I just want to know the price. I want to know the price, um, primarily because it comes with, uh, get check it out, check it out. This is how brilliant they are. This is sarcasm. <laughs> take a guess at what they call the remote. If you read it, don't take a guess. Just tell me you read it. <laughs> did you read it? No, I did not read it. Okay, what do you think they call the, 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 the peripheral? Uh, ring. Ring what? <laughs> Fit, I don't know. No, ring con. <laughs> That's, there you go. <laughs> but here's my thing. Like one of them is called Joy Con and it's supposed to excite joy. The other one is just called the Ring Con and it's like uh, what, what what okay, I don't get it. It's just weird. Um not very creative as usual. They always pick weird names for stuff. Well, um But again, the game actually looks pretty neat. So if you haven't checked it out, I kinda recommend it. For, mm-hmm. I mean, are we surprised? We Fit was one of their biggest titles. Granted, part of it is because they packaged it in with every single Wii that they sold, but mm-hmm. they did get, you know, a lot of the Wii Fitness peripherals sold incredibly well. A lot of people bought those games. I had those games. I mean, so, I, I know a lot of people that got the sports versions, the rackets, the baseballs, the, you know, the, the golf club there or you go. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not actually, I'm actually not that surprised that if a lot of people gravitate to this. Because nowadays, they, people, even gamers, we want to be healthy, you know, in our life. And if this gives us that little bit of healthiness, you know, while I'm still sitting on the couch. Because even if you're just sitting on the couch, you know, and just be like, hey. Because technically, you know, there's people that are going to be doing it. Hell, I'm one of those. <laughs> especially when I used so to. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me stop you right there. So, we're talking about a fitness game. Yes. And the first thing you say is, I can't wait to play this sitting on the couch. Yes. And I used to do that a lot with the freaking Wii, okay? Oh, God. Don't judge me, because whenever you do Wii Dance or whatever, Just Dance, and you have the Wii joke, I'm like, okay, really? You're not really monitoring my body movement, so I'm just like, hey, do that wrist work, do that wrist <laughs> work. <laughs> and I still get everywhere and everything, everything I needed. So with the Joy-Con, again, you're not really capturing me, <laughs> so I can just move one leg, Acting like I'm actually running up and down and then just, you know, I'm doing upper body work, you know? Uh, that's all I really want to work is on my upper body. I don't need to work on my thighs, you know? I got sexy thighs. <laughs> when we need a screenshot for the episode for the promotional stuff, do me a favor. Do, do Take a screenshot of this section. <laughs> With you being super excited about this particular thing and me just like... <laughs> My face in my palm, like, oh my god. I needed that laugh, I appreciate it. So now we know how Ricky's gonna be playing the game, but if you are interested in the game, go check it out. 
Because it looks pretty Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a chance. I would do it. Um, at least I will say it's better than the cardboard stuff that they came out with. So, this might actually be something that I would probably get into. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I'll let you know because I really am considering getting it. Um, simply because it just looks like fun. Oh, we can and even I, do an episode. That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. <clears throat> I was thinking we could do something along those lines. Um, the next uh, news story that I wanted to share uh, breaks my heart. <sighs> Basically, it's uh, a review is kind of out. Uh, the review or the, the feedback was from Jason Schreier uh, over uh, on Kotaku. And, and if you don't know Jason Schreier, great journalist, awesome opinions, pretty spot on and basically everything. Like uh, his mm-hmm. his opinion is, is very well in line with mine for the most part. So I'm kind of like a little sad. Uh, so essentially they're talking about the Dungeon Maker uh, or the Chambered Dungeons in Link's Awakening. So as we mentioned, really looking forward to this game. Part of the reason why I'm so excited is because they introduced this new feature where it's a very Mario-like, Mar- Mario Maker-like aspect where you're creating your own dungeons and things of that nature. That's how they sold it. Apparently, according to Jason Schreier, it really is not much like Mario Maker. So in order for you to be able to arrange these dungeons, you have to have already beat the dungeons in the game so that you can collect them. So what essentially is happening is that it's not so much you making your own dungeons, it's you using previous dungeons to basically create a new maze. So you're going to be playing the same thing, just kind of in different order. And that is the piece that kind of disappoints me. Because I was really hoping for more control. Mm -hmm. I was kind of thinking, okay, so there may be like this dungeon, and this is like the basic layout, but then you can do this, and you can edit that. But it doesn't seem to be that way. And according to him, there's like rules that you need to follow, and and that rules can vary depending on uh, the level and depending on what you're trying to do. Um, But you have the you know different rules where, like for example, um, every dungeon needs an entrance room and a boss room. It needs an even number of stairways. Uh, The number of locked doors need to be equal to or fewer than the number of chests. You can't choose what's inside the chest, only whether or not you're placing a room with a chest in it. So That's things stupid. like that, yeah. You see, so it's kind of disappointing from that aspect, and um, it makes wanna, me really if, sad. If I want to create a maze, I want to create a maze. I want you to go through that maze door and feel mm-hmm. disappointed because you they went through the wrong one, mm-hmm. and I want you to challenge yourself to go through the right door and find the right door. Don't tell me. I want to. Ma- I want to be able to put you know have a chest and you open it up and a bad guy comes out. <laughs> Why not? That's what I want. Yeah. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to have more control so here's the good news the good news is that with this feature it shows that they're interested in possibly making some sort of zelda maker and this is part of how they thought of doing it interesting first start however i think that in terms of future i'm hoping that perhaps with the feedback and that that may come from this and people not being happy about it that they do a patch of some sort Mm -hmm. and that maybe they kind of expand a little bit and make it a little more open but I am very much hoping that even though this doesn't seem to match what I originally wanted and what other players may have originally wanted, that it leads and breaks the path for something of what we want to come along the line. You know what I mean? Yep. So I'm kind of hoping that that's the case. Um, I know you're not very disappointed because you weren't really much looking forward to this game. I'm sure you'll borrow it at some point. I'll let you borrow it. You're fine. <laughs> See, that's why I like you, man. <laughs> Because I, I let you borrow my game. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, that was man. I'm st- I'm still disappointed about that, man. I was very much looking forward to to being able to make my own dungeons. That that's all I want, really. I don't think. Whoops. Especially with the way that they designed this, like a top down Zelda. I think that's the way to go as far as a Zelda maker goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see how else you can make a Zelda game or something Zelda like without it having to be focused around dungeons. I think. The the quote unquote world aspect I don't want to say open world because it really isn't an open world, but the world aspect of it wouldn't really work in my opinion for a maker type of game. But as far as a dungeon maker, I think that's totally within the wheelhouse of Nintendo. So that's that's what I want to see. I want to see an update where I can design the room, I can put the hazards, I can time everything the way that I wanted to, mm-hmm. and then like here's the part like. So here's the piece that kind of bugs me. 
So, like Mario Maker, you would create your level, in this particular case, your dungeon. Okay. In order to save it, you have to play through it and you have to be able to win it. You have to be able to clear it. So, just to confirm, because I have a question. Sure. Oh, so we're talking about we have to go through like the story mode and complete the world or the mm -hmm. world that we have built, we have to beat our own world to Both. be able to save it. Both. So here, yes. <clears throat> ah, shoot. So from my understanding, in order to have access to the dungeon to be able to use it, you have to have cleared it. So you... Play it in the game. Once you complete it in the game through the story mode, now it becomes available through Mar uh, through Mario Maker, <laughs> <laughs> through the Dungeon Maker, and then you can go ahead and use it in that aspect. Okay. But you would have to first play it through the game, and and that that's that's also another downside. Like, mm. why do I have to collect them? Why can't I just make my own stuff? Why isn't this particular section standoff? And again, the part that I'm most annoyed by, I have to play through the dun through my whole creation in order to save it. But realistically, I've already played through all these dungeons, and that that's that's the disappointing piece. <laughs> I've already yeah. like, I kind of, I would have preferred if they would have done it like, you can't use this theme until you clear it in the world. That makes more sense to me. You can't use this hazard until you clear this in the story mode. You can't use this until you clear. That to me makes more sense. You see what I mean? Because now you're just gathering items. But for you to have clear the dungeon and then to have that same dungeon over here and all you're doing is just rearranging how you go through it doesn't really matter to me. No. And it doesn't necessarily appeal to me. No. So I'm kind of disappointed. Not me. I know that. <laughs> Honestly, I can't really care for this. I mean, yeah, you don't care, so I get it. I get it. I get it. But I gotta, I gotta sympathize for everybody that does want this game <laughs> and that appreciates the style games. So, I feel for you guys. I feel for you. Thanks, and, I appreciate and, and ladies too, and mothers Thanks. and fathers. We, we appreciate sisters, it. cousins, sons. Uh, you know, cousins, whatever. brothers, sisters, college roommate. What does that make us? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? If you haven't seen Spaceballs, like, you have to see Spaceballs. No. If you're too young to know what Spaceballs is, it's a parody of Star Wars. Go watch it. It's really good. I have, I've seen chunks. I've seen Beats and Pisses. I've never seen, like, the whole thing from, like, start to end. What? I have never. We're going to have to. Okay, so the next article I'm going to go over. <laughs> I'm actually going to read this entire article over on Polygon. This is by Petrana Radulovic. Uh, oh, Super oh. Nintendo World opens next spring in Universal Studios Japan. Japan. <laughs> While most details of this highly anticipated theme park expansion have been kept under wraps, Universal Parks and Resorts Chairman and CEO Tom Williams revealed more information about the park in an interview at the Bank of America Merrill Lynch 2019 Media Communications and Entertainment Conference in Los Angeles this week. Holy hell, that was a mouthful of an event. Like, ah. wow, what a name. <clears throat> at, uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Uh, at opening, Japan's Super Nintendo World will have a Mario Kart ride and a Yoshi's Adventure ride, Williams said. These two rides will be part of the first phase of the park. The land will also be interactive with a magnetic red wristband for patrons to wear that allows them to fully engage in all the levels of the park and interfaces back with game consoles, apparently. Uh, you will be able to go up, up and keep score and play with various games that also translates to a scorekeeping capability. If you choose to do so within the rides, then it actually interfaces back with your game console, explained Williams. He did not specify exactly which console the wristband will interface with or what exactly that even means. He also confirmed that a Bowser-themed area as well as a Princess Peach castle will be included in the park. Williams promised that Super Nintendo World will come to other Universal Parks after Japan's opening, uh, though he did not give a timeline. Uh, quote, but we are bringing it, he clarified. Quote, you can count on it. End quote. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a lot to unpack there. It's a pretty short article, which is why I wanted to read the whole thing. There's a lot of information in it. So to start off, two, two rides. Those rides... Do you think that that's good enough? Like, do you, does that catch your attention? Mario Kart and Yoshi's Adventure. Uh, I mean, yes, they catch my attention, but I I need at least more than two rides 
depending on the style of ride that it well, is. Well, more are coming. I mean, yeah. Now, it did say be, Bowser to, and Peach's Castle, so I'm sure there'll be more. Yeah, so. now, to be honest, even when I go to a normal theme park, I honestly really don't go through that many rides um, myself. Oh, I, mean, I try to go through all of them. I don't do roller coasters as much. I do them over and over and over and over and over again. reason why I really don't do roller coasters is because uh, for everybody that's watching the video, you know, on YouTube every Friday, uh... You know, go check it out. Episodes are there. Um, it's, the, it's this belly right here. Not many places. Actually, a lot of rides that I've gone to Disney lately, when they're trying to do like a, a self-buckle kind of deal. And mm -hmm. a lot of those rides, um, for example, like the Harry Potter ride, the one that you have to pull the, the upper uh, brace down. My mm -hmm. arm gets stuck in between the, oh, the, the wood of the chair and the actual brace. So I can't ever... Like clip it on myself, and oh, they're really sucks. not, and they really don't help you as much. And then the same thing happened to me after I waited legit almost three and a half hours on on the line for um, uh, for uh, Avatar, the oh, the three D wow. the three D one. My I guess because I'm tall, my legs are tall, and the the brace for your leg portion wouldn't go down as much because I. You know, my leg is so long, I can't, yeah. you know. But, yeah, so... After I I hours waiting? Yes, dude. Were you able to, though? No, I actually had to step away after right. I made all the lines. So, like, the wife and my nieces and everybody, like, stayed behind, rode the ride. And I just waited outside. So, I, I've Freaking actually... Lame. I have actually come across those scenarios a little too often. So, I only stick to, like, one or two rides, to be honest. Um... But one of the ideas that kind of popped into my head, especially since you're talking about that you'll be tied down to like a, a band, a magnetic band. That <coughs> oh, I was about to get to that point. That actually interact uh, with the park. Um, I know that, uh, I believe it's also on PlayStation and, and both on Xbox as well. There's a, a Disney game where you mm -hmm. can technically, you know, walk around the park on the video game and interact with stuff. Um, really? Yeah, there is. So I was aware. now make that style a concept but do it to where it also links to that magnetic brace uh, or bracelet and you can actually open like secret items within the video game that'd be cool and all that stuff mm -hmm. like oh you know normally yes you can walk through this park but you can only get this specific item if you actually scan in the park so it kind of gives you that motivation to actually going into the park and you know, going through areas of the park that you probably would, you know, depending on what it is, it might not catch your attention, but because of the concept behind it, and if you want to unlock something, I, I don't know, something along those lines, I'm just throwing ideas out there, it actually gets you to go to normal portions of the park that you normally wouldn't uh, go to because of interest-wise. Fair enough. Now, I will say, I think he misspoke. I don't think it's magnetic. Let's, re let's be realistic. It's probably an well, amiibo. Yeah, whatever it is. It's just, an amiibo band. You'll be able yeah. to scan it. Chances are you'll be able to scan it into your Switch. I don't know why they're talking about what console. Realistically, Mario Kart and Yoshi's Adventure. The, what console are you going to scan it into? You're going to scan it into the Switch. Let's be realistic. Yeah. So I think that that's what it's going to end up being. I think it's going to be an NFC chip, and then that it's going to just read it off of that. I think that's going to be the smarter, cheaper choice. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what's going to make it interesting for me, That realistically. I think that, that that'll... Having an amiable band to be able to keep it, tabs on the things like that, I think would be really cool. Um, I'm very interested about the Mario Kart, and now it makes sense. If you remember, um, I think it's been over a year now. We we talked about when Nintendo sued a company. It was a random company in Japan who was doing uh, Mario Kart races on the streets of Japan, and you would rent a go kart and you would dress up like characters and you'd go ahead and. You know, have an adventure. So I'm curious to see how they are going to be doing this Mario Kart um, ride. Is it really a ride? Is it a track that you actually can race in? Because that would be awesome. And it'll, it'll most definitely be a, some kind of a track that they'll allow. Because mm -hmm. you, if you open it for to be open for like the whole entire theme park or whatever, you then run into the risk of you actually hitting... Um, different pedestrians while you're riding around so it'll have to be some kind of a track just for safety purposes don't disappoint me ricky <laughs> <laughs>
Is it going to be like, you know, the Speedway Adventure thing that oh, they had at Disney or they still Audubon have at Disney? Audubon or whatever. Yeah. Ooh, dude, that would be cool. Freaking <clears throat> Audubon style, but ooh, I wonder if, ooh. See, that, that's that's ooh. what I would like. For anybody who doesn't know, <laughs> and I'm assuming Reese talking about Audubon here, uh, yes. located where we live in Jacksonville, Florida. It's, um, you basically go Ele- and you wear helmets. Go- electric go-karts that go up to speeds of 50 miles an hour on are track. they electric yes they're electric oh, i thought they were gas all right no. cool no they they can do gas indoors uh, it's, ah, in, true, it's, true, true, it's true. also an indoor place so it's a electric uh go-kart fair enough fair enough so i'm very curious to see that i would like to know what yoshi's ride would be like like that's, am i that's riding the, on a yoshi that's, that's the kitty ride then that really just means they only have one ride, Ricky. What the hell are they opening? What's the point of opening one, this one, park of them? One is the family ride, which is Yoshi. The other one is the very vengeful attack, attack. And, of course, okay. I'm going to laugh. I, I will laugh that if you go through specific zones in the ride. Oh, see, now I'm even thinking of this. If, just like um, Mario Kart. You know how you go those uh, those special uh, yeah, items. Yeah, the weapons. Yeah, those yeah. weapons. You probably go through some kind of I- AR whatever. Yeah. section and you'll have like a little screen like oh you can now collect this and just like um those uh how do you call those laser tag style uh yeah. things you have some kind of a laser tag that basically bounces. try to aim it or whatever yeah uh, that'd be cool so like and if i just want to go to the yeah. gift shop and block i just want to go to the gift shop buy a blue shell and throw it at somebody yep that's all i want but yeah, so see now I'm even damn it now now you got me thinking because are we gonna are we gonna need to go to Japan? Is that what's happening? Pretty right much, now? pretty much. All right, cool. Well, we're we're definitely gonna have to go to Japan. Yes. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna close it for the news for this week. Um, again, Nintendo coming out doing awesome things. So, starting October first, Nintendo is coming to come out with a new offer. Uh, that basically entails that any individual who has purchased an individual membership to their online service is going to be able to trade in the remaining days of their uh, account as a discount uh, for the family plan so that you can upgrade your package to the family online plan. Huh. So if you have <clears> – so for example, Ricky, you, you got the single you, – yep. you have the online plan, right? You got yep. it for yourself, the individual plan. If you were to buy another Switch, you – would be able to go ahead and turn in whatever is left uh, as a discount. So, like, let's say you have two months left. To in other be able words, to trade you're paying that the in. differences. Yeah, pretty much. What the transfer rate is, don't know yet. They haven't come out and said that. So, like, you know, if you have a month left, it equals this much. If you have two months, it equals that much. They haven't said that much yet. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a really interesting plan and f- about freaking time, to be quite honest mm-hmm. with you. Because it's one of those scenarios where... Originally, I kept going back and forth between the family plan and the individual plan. Now, obviously, at this point, with a third switch coming, I need the family <laughs> plan. But I would have liked at first to feel more you know, secure in my purchase to be able to get the individual one and then upgrade. And that never made sense to me as to why you couldn't do so. I'm also very curious as to what Nintendo is going to do with all the people who bought the individual one and then they bought the freaking family plan because, you know what I mean, like they had to. Like that, that kind of seems like they should get something for it. Mm-hmm. So, are you, are you sticking with the indi- you're sticking with the individual? You don't I'm, need anything. Yeah, else. no, my kid, my girls are <laughs> small enough that they're they're not that interested in video games than Barbies at yet. the moment. So, yeah, yet I, I will get them there eventually. Don't know how, <laughs> but I will get them there. But, uh, and that's only if they won. Now, if they really want to switch or whatever, once they grow up and they want to play, you know, I'm pretty sure by then there's going to be like Switch Recon 2 plus 9.0, I don't know. <laughs> or the Xbox Switch. Thank you, Chris. See, yeah, I knew yeah, I would get yeah. out of you one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. All right, everybody. That basically does it for the news for this week. Now, if you're brand new to the show, every each and every single week, we have something called the Cheat Code of the Week. Now, this week's Cheat Code was actually written by Ricky. So, Ricky, you want to take it away? Do you uh, remember what the Cheat Code was, or did uh, you forget that you wrote it? No, I, I remembered it. If you're looking at the video, I'm actually holding my nose. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were holding your nose because of the Cheat Code. You were holding your nose like, oh, crap. Like, what do I need? What do I do? <laughs> No, um, the basically the cheat code is blame the little one. 
<laughs> so last week, um, I had some refried beans and some chimichanga <laughs> with hot sauce and all that fun stuff. Uh, yes, I'm going to tell you exactly what I love I how you're rubbing your belly as you're saying this. Ah, yeah, you know, it just, it just didn't, I'm trying to give, I'm trying to give content to the, to the people that are going out to actually watch our videos. You know, I got to make Fair it enough. somewhat entertaining for them. So, you know, my, my daughter, <laughs> my, my stomach started hurting, you know, and because of that, you know, I, natural gases, you know, yeah. formulate in your body, which then those gases release. Did you seriously blame it on her? <laughs> well, I have that's my, what I'm asking. Like, I, yeah, no, I did. Uh, I did. My six year old basically tells me because every single time that my youngest one poops, because you know, at times she's on diapers, because um, she's going through potty training, and uh, sometimes she poops, and my oldest daughter's mad quick to be like, "Papi, Camila pooped." <laughs> I'm like. Perfect moment. I, I'm, I have all the windows up in the car and everything. I'm driving. Uh, we're driving. <laughs> so you were hotboxing these poor children? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. That's, hey, hey, I got to get my pleasure somehow. God. <laughs> so, you know, one of those gases happened to release, and then my daughter just quickly said, Poppy, Poppy, come in up. I'm like, well, you know, we'll just have to wait until we get to the. To the house, you know? So, so this cheat code is kind of like, just take advantage of the situation and... and all right, fair enough. <laughs> so you have it, the cheat code for this week. Yay. Oh, oh, flatulence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Before we as, leave. as long as there's no harm being done to the kids, you know, if, if you can get, get away Other with something, you know, if something breaks and, you know, you broke it and you don't want to, you know, this is for the parents, you know, just, just blame it on the little one, you know? They did it. All right. Well, that does it for this week's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, wait, before we go, anything you want to share? Um, true. You got me. Share, recommend, ask people to check out. Uh, check out YouTube, you know, mm -hmm. for Gaming Dad 101 every Friday. You know, our last episode is there. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Give us feedback. Give us feedback. We need more people to actually go to YouTube and check those things out. Give us some So I've come it. I've come to notice that we have we have three groups of people. Yep. So we have the group of people that is very vocal, very out there, very hey guys, how's it going? They even message us privately and check how we're doing, things like that. Love those people. Then we have the people who come to the Facebook group and they participate here and there, but for the most part, they, they stay behind and they kind of watch things go and they'll comment here and they'll comment there. And then we have the people that are just totally silent that I feel like they're like, they, they go in like every now and then you'll see somebody join the Facebook group and you, you, you see them like just liking stuff, but they're like, like not commenting and stuff. Those are the people I would like to reach out to today. I encourage you to go ahead and comment, go ahead and post. It's a free form post memes, post jokes, post whatever, doesn't matter. We're on a group of people just trying to have fun. So if you're there and you are, for lack of a better term, a lurker, by all means, <laughs> come on in to the group. Again, facebook.com. It's it's at the bottom of the video, but it's facebook.com. Go search Gaming Data 101. Join the group. We will let you in. And chances are it's going to be Ricky, myself. Uh, we have Garrett, who's also one of our admins. We have James uh, Kindlesperger, who's now also one of our admins. So thank you to both of them. They're actually our newest admins. Um, so go ahead. Check us out. You'll enjoy it. You'll have a good time. That's what I would like to recommend is for all yeah. our audience to be we more... Bite. I mean, unless you ask, Not but <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I would like to say is if you haven't done so already, please, 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 please go over to iTunes or whatever service you listen to us on and rate us. If you're watching this on YouTube, go give us a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're watching, if you're listening to this as a podcast, go ahead and give us five stars. Um, if you think the episode sucked, go ahead and give us five stars and tell us why it sucked. If you love the episode, go ahead and give us five stars and tell us why you loved it. The key word here is five stars, people. <laughs> All right. Woo. So if you haven't done so already, please do so. If you have already given us a review, thank you so much. It really means a lot, and this is what's helping us keep the show alive. So thank you, everybody, for joining us this week. Uh, I believe we've covered everything. Um, go check us out on our website. Go check us out on Twitter by checking out Following Geek and Cast. You can follow me on Twitter at VizkZen, name underneath my uh, picture right here. You can follow Ricky at Picky Gamer Dad, name underneath his picture as well on YouTube. Um, go check us out. Go add us. Go talk to us. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.